I would invite the third speaker, last speaker today, Magda Radomska, um, who is a post-Marxist art historian. Uh, she uh, is associated professor at the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. Uh, she is founder and director of Piotr Piotrowski Center for Research on Eastern Central European Art. She also published uh, several books and articles, for example, uh, The Plural Subject, Art and a Crisis After 2008. So the floor is yours. Thank 20 you so minutes much. is yours, Magda. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to respect it. So I'm very happy um, for, for, in, for you um, to, for inviting me to this project first by Andrea, then by Zsuzsa and Emesha and David. Thank you very much, I'm very happy, especially grateful. I know that I'm the last one today and I'm aware that by now we would be all cleaning or cooking or sleeping if it was on Zoom, you know, as we are used to it. So, but now I can see you and I, I'm checking if you are sleeping or not, so. Okay, so let me start. I would like to, uh, to present a short paper that is still in progress because we are, um, we are planning on publication after this project. So this is the part of my research done so far. Um, and this is, um, uh, the, the research is oriented towards, uh, towards alternative, uh, collect, I mean, collective thinking of cooperation in uh, Eastern Europe. Um, and I would like to compare this with uh, Latin America. Um, and uh, trying to adjust this approach to, to the topic of the conference, which is oriented towards uh, the, the region. Um, I would like to um, show you certain art pieces that are, um, that are connected with Poznań, and I would like to uh, somehow um, pr problematize the Poznań role in the uh, whole, uh, whole process. So let me start by referring to Piotr Piotrowski's book, which is um, about to uh, be published in English soon. I hope by the end of this year, it will be published by Igor Zabel Association. Um, so in, in his last unfinished book, A Global Approach uh, to the Art of Eastern Europe, published in Polish in 2016, which is about to be published in English, um, by Igor Zabel, Association for Culture and Theory, Piotr Piotrowski investigated the question whether global art exchange that took place within the context of NET and Galer uh, Gallery Accumulatory 2 have a formative or, infor uh, or informative character. He argued that artistic exchanges taking place through NET established by Jarosław Kozłowski and Andrzej Kostołowski in Poznań in 1972 had a quote informative rather than formative character in, on, in a global context as why South American artists and collective par collectives participating in net such as Carlos Amolares from Mexico, Angelo de Anquino from Brazil, Guillermo de Deisler from Chile, um, then living in Bulgaria, Antonio Diaz from Brazil, Juan Luis Diaz from Mexico, Diego, Viteres from Mexico, Artur Matuk from Brazil, Clemente Padin from Uruguay, Horacio Zabala from Argentina, and so on. Uh, they tended to abandon, uh, and I quote, art understood as an autonomous aesthetic sphere to give way to actions that were par excellence political, end of quote. East Central European artists valued their referential activities in the field of art. Piotrowski criticizes artists from the region for their uncritical attitude towards modernism, claiming that in Eastern Europe, autonomy and self-referentiality of art functioned as unquestioned dogma. Referring back to my research on Hungarian avant-garde art, Piotrowski argued that with the exception of Hungarian environment, East Central European artists were not really interested in political activity and therefore never demonstrated an interest in Marxism or anti-imperialist narrative. Uh, on the other hand, there has been a well-established narrative emphasizing democratic nature behind the alternative gallery practices 
especially those connected with net. Clara Kemp Welch, in her book Networking in the Blo Networking the Block, sorry, Experimental Art in Eastern Europe from 1965 to 1981, affirmatively asserts that Accumulatore 2 were embedded in democratic practices of running the space and uh, and cooperation. Also, Szymon Wrubel and Russell Radzinski stress democratic features of Kozłowski's art. Such an approach escapes the historical narrative of collectivism, which is being reduced either to false pretenses or simply appropriated by victorious hegemony projected back onto historical context. It also ignores the art uh, historical context of Plaxus uh, that turned out to be influential in this part of Europe and um, in Gal um, Kozłowski um, uh, was um, engaged in the Fluxus Festival in Poznań in 1977. Um, so it also ignores um, the, the context of Fluxus, abolishing its anti-imperial and anti-capitalist practices, reducing it to yet another Western movement, a necessary step to be taken in order to catch up with the Western art narrative. The goal of this paper is thus to investigate how it is possible to use a different narrative and different frame, one that stresses the importance of the working conditions and demonstrates how the structure of the production process forms the basis of class construction. I would like to investigate the historical role of Poznań in terms of uh, its part in the rhizomatic structure of collective art practices in Eastern Europe and its peripheral status, which according to the famous concept of Piotrowski, the concept of horizontal art history, could be seen as privileged. Uh, in the afterword to English trans, uh, trans, translation of Piotrowski's new book that I'm uh, very happy to, uh, to write, uh, to, to, uh, I, to be, I, I, I was asked to, to write and I'm very honored um, because of that. Uh, I have already elaborated on, on the problem involved in such a perspective that tends to see periphery as essentially privileged. Although what Piotrowski meant was its critical position made by possible due, made possible due to its mar marginalization, I argued that when framed with Marxism, Piotrowski's notion of periphery is not distant from Marxist understanding of proletariat in the aspect of its self-awareness. Today, I would like to reverse that logic provoked by the opening call of Piotrowski's last book, namely a paraphrase of communist manifesto for the peripheries of the world to unite. I would like to prove that what legitimizes the peripheral status understood as critical condition is precisely its class consciousness, otherwise periphery could be nothing more than a mere function of the Western hegemony. Uh, the very concept of horizontal art history came into the existence in Poznań and it has been effectively proved by Dorota Jarecka in her text, um, that, uh, that is the book that we uh, already published on Piotr Piotrowski, Art After Democracy, that is also on personal issues with, um, uh, I mean, the aspect of friendship um, with Piotr. Uh, and this is yet to be published by Rutledge. Um, and, uh, and I quote, I use text uh, by Dorota Jarecka that in her text, Horizontal Art History and the Revolutionary Double Bind, a result uh, of his experience with Net and Accumulatore mediated by Piotrowski's teacher Kozłowski, with whom he collaborated between 1971 and 1975. Kozłowski had been, uh, had been invited for a series of lectures in contemporary art at Adam Mickiewicz Institute of Art History by Andrzej Turowski, Polish art historian who had uh, strong ties to the revolt of 1968 and it was equipped and uh, who was equipped with Marxist background and he was lecturing on Marxism in our institute. Uh, at the time, Poznań was important as the exposition place for Hungarian art scene. In the 1970, Hungarian art historian Janos Brendel, who emigrated to Poznań, proposed an exhibition of contemporary Hungarian art for um, BWA, uh, so it was um, Bureau of Artistic Exhibitions, 
within the framework of the 20th anniversary of the Revolution of Hungarian People's Republic. As Clara Kempwersch claims after Patrick Vasiak, Brendel's proposal was coached in the language of cultural exchange between socialist um, nation exemplif exemplifying what is called uh, the gray zone, straddling official and unofficial life that was uh, so characteristic of, as she claims, of the art world of the times. Um, the gray zone uh, is here nothing more than a buffer separating safely dichotomies of official and official art inherent to another binary construct. The one of, of official or um, uh, dependent or and unofficial independent art scene. It seems that those notions are conditioned and projected back by a binary model of, of transition that is usually referred to as the transition from the totalitarian communism towards democracy that appears as free from any totalitarian or even authoritarian inclinations. Defined by such dichotomies, art gathered in the net archive and exhibited in Cumulatore 2 would thus represent a democratic desire, I mean, in theory, I, I criticize that position, materialized in universal, uh, that is, a political role of art reduced most often to its autotelic function, abstract concept of freedom and West mediated by the use of English. It is sufficient to show several works by Kozłowski to prove that it was actually the case. Um, mm, sorry. Um, uh, yes, this is the, this is the work uh, from 1973, uh, a lesson. This is also a part of art book of Kozłowski. Most of his works were originally created in English, which literally corresponded uh, with male art of both American and British artists, art and language, for instance, that was sent to net. Those works lacked any contextual reference, as, is, as Piotrowski put it, they could have had been created in any part of the globe. Uh, there, uh, they were uh, what I would call originally translated to English. This is a, a, a curious uh, kind of uh, link with body speech. So they were originally translated or already translated into English. Therefore, there, there no way to, intro, uh, to, um, to introduce them to the original context uh, they simply lack. Such an approach may be well illustrated by the work uh, in from 1979 uh, also from, from Nets collection by Ludmiła Popiel and Jerzy Fedorowicz that initiated uh, international uh, planners in Osieki that took place from 1963 until 1981. This work might be interested as an assertion of a, a pretense declared in English. On the other hand, there were also works of art that are critical towards this illusion of universal community. Worth noticing is the word, work of Yugoslavian artist. And again, this is a link. Uh, it seems that we argued somehow on the <laughs> on our content of our papers. Uh, from Novi Sad, Bogdanka Poznanovic, um, from her series Invisible Communication. The artist who uh, was, as Emesha Kurti proves after Balin Sombothi, and this is uh, actually the, the, the very whole, uh, the, the very same quote as you used, crucial for Hungarian-Yugoslav relations, why the word uh, write, uh, uh, writes the word brief in several languages from the region. Sanya Kojic Mladenov, uh, after Mishko Suvakovic argues Poznanovic was a part of the practice of artificial criticism term introduced by German Orcelland in order to change the language criteria when discussing Arte Povera. Those attempts essential to works of Poznanovic uh, might be reapproached from the perspective of the abolition of the tradition of formal analysis. And this is my, 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 the point of my uh, presentation. Discussed by Piotrowski after Kitty Zeman's the possibility and the call for the global uh, studies to reject dominance of West-centric formal analysis in favor <laughs> of more on material one are not yet sufficiently developed, uh, even though art historical narrative turns out to be helpless while facing some wor works of artivists that effectively resist formal analysis. 
I believe it is Marxist perspective to be employed in order to abolish the narrative dominance of formal analysis, as it is Marxist perspective that could tear out um, dominance, uh, sorry, tear out, uh, tear out form embedded analysis from the super, superstructural entanglement. Uh, as I prove in uh, another text, um, I would see the, the, the shift from form analysis uh, to material analysis as a shift from uh, superstructure to the base, um, I mean step back, uh, which is essential. Um, it is acknowledgement of the primacy of the base over sub, sub, superstructural analysis that, takes the, uh, that makes the task possible. Poznanovich art might be seen as criticism of modernist strategies with, which limits the perception or reception of modernist practices due to its entanglement in formal analysis uh, as it does no longer rely solely on visual data. And this was also addressed here. The artist experimented with body imprint sounds um, that are especially interesting when subjected to material analysis. Sanya Koic Mladenov analyzes her work both using the notion of freedom uh, as uh, attributed to prospective democracy and simultaneously stressing her signals activity. Um, okay, um, therefore, oh, uh, and I would like to juxtapose uh, her work that um, lacks that uh, dominance of visual aspect with um, uh, another work of art uh, that is um, uh, that is um, uh, constructed that uh, that was uh, uh, introduced in uh, 1981, um, and uh, that is entitled um, Cataracta, uh, or cataract in English. That was uh, done by Borowski in Poland, and uh, which is invisible, I think, here, but. Uh, in the center, when the iris should be, uh, the, the sign uh, reads nose. So it's a cataracta, um, so the, the, the kind of illness that makes us blind, but is opening our nose, uh, which was um, kind of uh, condemned uh, uh, within the narrative of, uh, of modernism in, uh, in Poland. The, um, okay. And then I would like to show you um, that th this is also the art piece that uh, interests me because of, uh, uh, of how Vodichko deals with um, uh, abolition of the dominance of the visual, let's say, modernist tradition in a way, uh, why the whole uh, environment was really focused on those experiments. Uh, but this is also something that is interesting from the class perspective. And this is Pet Stembera, uh, artist from Czechoslovakia, of course, um, the uh, two works. Uh, this is tying shoes uh, from 1972, uh, or sewing on a button from 1971, freed from formal analysis, they might reveal the working conditions and economical situation of Stembera, who was not Stembera, I'm sorry, yeah, Stembera. Stembera, who was not officially registered as an artist, although he was um, employed. Uh, as as um, Clara Kempwelch proves, uh, he was invited by Kozłowski among first artists who were invited uh, to um, Accumulatory II because of the peculiarity of harsh Czechoslovakian period that was addressed uh, by Daniel already, uh, so-called no normalization um, uh, that um, um, lacking so-called uh, um, uh, independent gallery structure. Those activities by Stembera might be also analyzed through the figure of alienation. In the strict Marxist understanding, alienation does not primarily refer to a sense of alienation from society. Rather, it is linked to the identity crisis of the individual who lost the ability to define themselves through the concept of the work. Marx believed this phenomenon uh, stems mainly from the one-to-one -one correspondence between the human and the capital resulting from the process of commoditization of the individual and fetishization of goods. Material analysis, though, would enable to use the concept of alienation as related to our conditions during communism, because what I um, advocate for is a material analysis that would overcome the binary uh, division between uh, East and West, and thus enable us to use the internal contradictions of 
capitalism towards uh, internal co contradictions of co communism. Um, I'm, I, I know that the clock is ticking, um, so. Um, uh, but sorry, I lost myself. Uh, material analysis would enable to use the concept of alienation as related to art conditioning during communism, not only because it's deprivation of freedom, but precisely because of their relationship towards what was recognized by them as the domain of freedom, so the West. Moreover, I argue the entry, uh, uh, it was um, the aftermath of um, uh, uh, 1968, which in itself may serve as a figure of dialectics. Uh, I think that Boris uh, also said something similar, because in the afterword to the new book of Piotrowski, I argue that he overlooked actually uh, the binary status, uh, non-binary status of two of, uh, out of four horizontal cuts that he names, namely uh, non-binary status of 1968 and 1989. Um, so uh, I don't want to elaborate on this argument because it's too complex, but uh, just want to stress it. Um, there are only a few works in the collection that encourage class analysis, um, but numerous that are prone to such analysis. And I skip that part because uh, I already may, made many presentations on this, but I would like to just uh, say that this is essential uh, solidarity um, kind of... Uh, uh, practice that was employed by Becke and this also was in the collection of Jarosław Kozlowski of NET. Uh, and I would also like to analyze this uh, from the point of view of collective practice, but by collective I mean uh, something that is inherited from the um, uh, um, I mean, um, uh, fought with the communist background, um, um, which is essential, essential background for, for this artist, uh, as I claim. Uh, okay, uh, so, um, but I would like to show you uh, just briefly uh, this uh, work of art that is uh, done by Andrzej Kostowski, uh, so, um, who established NET, and this is Philosophy of the Pearl Maid from 1976. Uh, so this philosophy is, uh, uh, you see here it is rich, dirty, um, uh, dirty, foul, um, here clean, and something else, and that is uh, something that could be anal uh, analyzed from the from the class structure. I mean, uh, could uh, could help to understand this uh, class structure behind that. Um, and this is just a curiosity because um, uh, Georgi Golantoy was also uh, a part of collection um, of NET with not this artwork. But uh, I found interesting correspondence between this art piece, which is uh, illustrating the policy of free tees, yeah, namely uh, supported, uh, tolerated, and banned in Hungarian um, art policy, related to art policy, which proves that uh, at least Hungarian artists were really critical towards political, uh, uh, political uh, scene. Uh, which I can juxtapose with Horacio Zabala, forma in, uh, and function that is related to Argentina situation uh, uh, in the 70s, uh, in which he uses uh, the same motif of a flower that was a carnation, here is a rose, that flourish only in the water, but not in nafta or uh, neither in vino, in wine. Um, but I would like to just to summarize my, uh, my presentation uh, with this um, account uh, that Piotrowski uh, noticed in his last book because he just shifted his perspective in the last book uh, with a call that uh, promised a Marxist perspective that I was very glad of the, that because we had long discussion on this subject when he was still alive. Um, uh, but it was, to me, uh, it lacks certain aspects, so uh, I, I want to emphasize them. But now I'd like to just to finish with uh, two artworks that are, one of them is really, uh, really popular artwork known to everyone here, which is Andre Todd series, uh, I'm glad if I can type series from 1930, uh, sorry, from 1973 until 1975. Uh, I would like to just show you how I analyzed it in my book uh, that was also related to uh, non-binary structure of logics, namely one and zero system, uh, because uh, I, I found that artwork that is also uh, kind of famous, 
uh, with a magazine, Truth, Pravda, uh, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, political magazine. Uh, and he and I discovered uh, that he actually makes a hole, which is a zero in one. So as if he would comment on this uh, authoritarian, totalitarian regime, which is only a totalitarian zero lacking the other parts, the, the truth, the, the affirmative part. And uh, I also discovered in the NET collection uh, this artwork, uh, which is uh, really interesting because actually mm, uh, it, uh, um, it illustrates the principle of non-contradiction. So P is the case, or, and P is not the case simultaneously, uh, that is also kind of open to and interesting from my perspective that, uh, mm, that is kind of the, 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 uh, that uh, the, which um, which uh, um, which is based in the approach to abolish the binary oppositions in order to not to accept the winning scenario, but to uh, trigger a dialectical process and uh, maintain those uh, those notions in this way. Thank you so much. And I, if I may, if I may, just one invitation because. Uh, I'm running this uh, now the, for, for some part, uh, some time now, the web, uh, Facebook website of Piotr Piotrowski Center. And I would like to invite you to the celebration of the 70th birthday of Piotr. So I figured that we could, um, all of us, we could gather online, as it used to be during the pandemic. If you are interested, he would be 70 on the 14th of June. So I will post the, the kind of uh, Zoom invitation. If you are interested, please gather and take some alcohol, yeah, preferably <laughs> vodka, yeah, preferably vodka, so we can, uh, uh, so we can discuss and, and just, I, I, don't, I don't think about anything so-called official, yeah? I'm thinking about that we really miss each other and we would like to maintain in touch, yeah? So if you are free on the 13th of, Je uh, of June, I'll, I invite you to this celebration. Thank you very much. So thank you, Magda, for your invitation and also for your rich uh, presentation. And I would uh, be happy to, to invite uh, all three speakers here now.